hello everyone uh, today we are going to discuss about the next topic that is resolution of forces now what is actually resolution of forces this is uh, the process of finding the component of a given force in uh, in two given directions uh, these components will have the same effect on the body as given by the single force right now let's say any force is given uh, in a particular direction uh, we we draw the diagram and it will be more clear with that let's say this is any force given in this direction right and we want to resolve it into two components now first thing here the question is why we have to resolve it into two components what is the need of that i think in the last video i have discussed uh, with you that uh, if a force is there now let's say this is a body on this body there is a force on this side 20 newton and this side 10 newton now we, we can find out its resultant very easily how we just uh, do the algebraic sum now we can say it will be uh, the resultant will be now 10 newton now this will be the direction the resultant right but uh, in this case the, the forces are horizontal now same we can say for the vertical it is okay for horizontal and vertical forces we can do directly the algebraic sum but what will happen if the force is inclined like this now we cannot do the directly we cannot do the algebraic sum now same in this condition let's say one more force is there in this direction let's say this 20 newton now we cannot we cannot uh, directly uh, make calculation using this force now what to do we have to resolve it into two components so that we can make the algebraic sum to find out the resultant so this is the requirement of resolution of forces now come to this topic a given force is there r now we have to resolve it into two components now what we do let's say the given direction for for the force is this one and we take one more this one right now uh, we can say this is uh, the point of concurrency or we, we assume it like uh, uh, coplanar concurrent forces right now we we just close the rectangle what we get after closing the rectangle now in this rectangle what is there we name it name the corners like this is o a c you can name in any direction no issue in that now let's say this is the force r in oc direction in oa direction the force is P, we name the forces it may be f1 f2 you can give the name in, in your own symbol now this is the force q in ob direction right now let's talk about the angles let's say this oc r force is making alpha angle with oa and r is making beta angle with ob right now if this is beta this will also be beta we can say the alternate opposite angle so if you are clear about these angles so this one and this one right it will be same we know that so we have applied the same so let's uh, start we can say let the given force is r and its components are making angle alpha and beta with its line of action now we can say O A that is equal to P in O A direction the force is P and similarly O B in the O B direction the force is Q now triangle O C A I have discussed that O the angle O C A is equal to angle B O C angle B O C and that is what beta and I have discussed about the reason that is 
alternate angles right now from this we can say the angle o a c that will be we know the value of angle this we know the value of angle this now what will be this angle we know that the sum of the three angles in a triangle that will be 180 so alpha plus beta that will be if i subtract alpha plus beta from 180 we will get this angle so what will be this angle if i say that will be 180 minus alpha plus beta right so what will be this oac that is 180 minus alpha plus beta now we apply the sine rule here now we apply the sine rule to triangle oac and we get what is there in this sine rule sine rule says that the force divided by sine of opposite angle means let's say i am taking oa this is the oa direction this is the oa direction and oa opposite this so it will be sine of beta that is equal to the second side ac this is ac and opposite to this the angle is alpha so this is sine of alpha and that is equal to oc now this one opposite to this side the angle is this so oc it is sine of the same you have calculated here 180 minus alpha plus beta you can say like this right now we can see ac this ac is parallel to ob right so it is having same direction and magnitude also uh, magnitude will also be same so we can say ac is parallel uh, parallel and equal to ob so now we we fill the value of forces now oa it is represented by force p upon sin beta that is equal to ac this one in place of ac we can take q q upon sin alpha oa p upon sin beta ac the same q upon sin alpha and oc now what is oc what is oc was the given force r so what we do r upon now what is the angle here that is sin 180 minus alpha plus beta now we know that if we have this angle sin 180 minus theta if we have this formula that is equal to what sin theta so we apply the same here so what will be this this will be sin alpha plus beta only so we can say p upon sin beta that is equal to q upon sin alpha that is equal to r upon sin alpha plus beta right now what we do we equate any two like first we equate p with r then we equate q with r so we get the values thus the resolved parts of given force r first we equate this we get p now sin beta it will go here if we equate this and this sin will go here so we get r into sin beta divided by this that is what sin alpha plus beta and when we equate this then what we get q that is equal to sin will go here so that is r sin alpha divided by sin alpha plus beta now this was the first component which is required to be calculated and this is the second one so in this way we have resolved the r into two forces p and q now what is the value of p and q 
these are the values of p and q so in this way we can find out and now we are going to apply this directly to the numericals 